Okay, I'm back, and for those who are interested, dinner was pretty good. So, the next step here is to actually get our drone strikes GeoJSON onto our map. And in order to do this, we're going to have to go to our JavaScript file and down here to add some GeoJSON. Now, the first thing we need to do is let's take a look at our leaflet JS documentation over here. And GeoJSON, like I said, is kind of the new the new norm for web mapping data. So here we have a GeoJSON link and how to add GeoJSON data. Sweet. So long story short, it starts with a capital L like everything in Leaflet. That means basically the functions and everything coming after the capital L are in the GeoJSON, or excuse me, in the Leaflet library. Next thing we need to do is give um, the name of our data and we already created a variable in our so let's go back here to drone strikes. We should we started this with a variable named drone strikes and we brought it in to our index. It's been read. So now all we have to do um, is type drone strikes. Nice, huh? Sweet. So next thing to do is to comma and this is where it gets a little bit you know confusing for some basically what do we put here now and there are a couple options we can style it based on its attribute data which with points eh, probably not the best thing but you can definitely and you can also um, do do an on each feature function now what this does is it says every feature in your data layer so for example this one has drone strikes. So for every drone strike, every time someone basically mouses over a drone strike or does anything with the drone strikes, interacts with them, what do you want to have happen? And so you can in here type on each feature and create a function yada 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 that says, okay, when someone clicks on it, bind a pop-up, have a, uh, an info window pop-up, etc. When someone clicks on it, turn it red. Um, you can do a bunch of different stuff here. I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. But this is kind of cart before horse here. So what I'm going to do is just uh, put a semicolon there. Whoops. I don't need to know how my stocks are doing. Put a semicolon there and just leave it blank for now. But we're going to do that. All right, so down here in the API, it tells you the four different options that you can play with. You can also um, set style. So these are functions that you can do to your GeoJSON layer, etc. Check these out. But the main one you're going to worry about is on each feature. Absolutely. And style. But we'll talk about on each feature here. So once you do that, basically you have to add your GeoJSON to the map, just like the tile layer. Notice we imported the tile layer, give it some attribution, and then you have to do add to map. Well, all right, we'll just do this now before we forget. So what is this on each feature bit? Basically, there are two ways you can do this. You can write a function right here after this, as they do in the guide up here. So they have on each feature function, feature layer, blah, 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 blah. Write the, you know, bind a pop-up to the layer, et cetera, et cetera. However, I tend to actually like to write a separate function. That way I can tweak the function and theoretically it won't impact the leaflet running in the background. I don't know why I do this, but let's do it. So to create a function in JavaScript, you just type function and give it a name. I'm going to give mine a name. Let's see. Uh, you should generally give these names that make sense with what they do, but since I'm in the basement and it's freezing because it's minus 15 outside, we'll do this. So basement dweller. And on each feature always needs to have two parameters, feature, comma, layer, and just write that. Don't question it. <laughs> wow, I'd be a horrible parent. All right, and then we're going to type this. Now, I don't put a semicolon. Well, yes, I do put a semicolon. Sorry, I put a semicolon there now. Okay, good. So basically, we have a function called basement dweller. It has two parameters, a feature and a layer. And then in these curly brackets, Anything I write will uh, will run. 
So let's go back down here to on each feature. I'm going to get rid of that. What we want is basically once the GeoJSON is loaded, when someone does anything to any of the features in the GeoJSON, run this function, basement dweller. Again, it doesn't matter what you call your function, and generally you want to call it something that's appropriate, but I'm loath to do that right now. All right, so what we can do now, as you can see, is we can pretty much write anything. We can bind pop-ups to these things, and actually that's, that's what we're going to do. So for this one, let's do layer bind pop-up, which is an info window. Bind pop-up basically means add a pop an information window to this sucker and then when you click on it show it and when you click off of it or close it take it away all right and what you'll notice is up in this documentation basically it says feature.properties.description what is that well before i go any further i'm going to put a semicolon here again and let's go actually i'll bind a pop up though we will put hi, I'm an info window. And let's put this in an H1 tag. All right, and let's hit save. Oh, I just noticed something down here. Um, the semicolon, if I run this right now, it's not going to work. So if I delete this and hit save, it's going to work. So be very careful. One thing I mentioned in my lectures in class, and that's very important if you're not in my lectures in class to remember, is inside of a, a JavaScript, um, inside of the curly mustaches, you use commas instead of semicolons at the end of the lines, and you never use anything after the last line. And of course, the only line in here is on each feature basement dweller. So let's zoom in, shall we? This looks heinous, to say the least. These are drone strikes, and apparently it's not finding the image that is necessary to show this, but never panic. And also, obviously, we have a black background with black text, and I'm not sure where the black background's coming from unless I still have that styled somewhere um, in another file. Perhaps in my index file, it's styled that way. So a couple of things. First of all, let's fix this icon. So to create an icon that basically works better than this, there are a couple of things you can do. I'm going to use a default marker icon right now, but I will also in the next tutorial show you how to make your own. Um, unless I have a better one. A farmer doesn't really make sense for drone strikes. So yeah, we'll use this marker here. So to do this, we need to go back to our script. And before I do anything else under the add some GeoJSON, let's do var teardrop alright and how do I know how to do this stuff? Well actually I don't memorize it all quite frankly. I probably will someday when I do it enough but if you go up here and click on you know find icon there it is boom so far icon l icon and in here we will give this icon url and our icon is in an images folder comma Um, we could give it a size. I don't know this. This isn't a square icon, so I'm not going to bother giving it a size. You can give it a drop shadow, um, a shadow size, everything else. This should probably do it for right now. That's all I'm going to worry about is creating this icon. And then we close that out and hit save. Then down here, let's see, we will go layer set icon, I think it is. And we will type in teardrop. So let me explain what's going on here. Um, basically, we're saying variable teardrop. Uh, we created it's an icon. Here's the URL. 
Then down here in the basement dweller function, we're saying layer bind pop-up, say this, layer set icon to teardrop. We created a variable so we can just directly call upon it. Now let's see if this works actually. I'm always curious. Okay, so it's not working, but don't panic. That's the first rule. So let's look at our code over here. And basically, um, oh, I just spotted it. One thing that kind of drives me nuts about Leaflet, and maybe it's just me because I haven't, you know, I'm kind of a self taught JavaScripter, but sometimes you have to add the word new in front of your. Uh, for example, up here we have variable map equals l dot map, but sometimes with some of these you really actually have to add new, and I think with icon, if I could even go here and find out. Well, now it says l icon. Hmm. Well, I think we need the word new here. Why? I don't know. And if someone can actually tell me, that'd be great. Let's hit um, save here and refresh here. There they are. Voila. So, we still have one problem I want to fix really quickly, and I know that this tutorial uh, is getting a little long. Our stuff isn't showing up here. So what we can do is, under this layer bind pop-up, we can write as much HTML as we want. We could add, embed images. We can do, you know, whatever we want. I'm going to simply, um, in here, give it a class name. And I'll call it info head for header. How about info header? All right. Now notice something is going horribly wrong here. This should all be orange. What it is is you need to nest your quotation marks inside of the double quotation marks. So this quotation mark ends here, and this one ends here. If you use double quotation marks, it goes from here to here and here to here. That will hold you up sometimes and really mess up your code. So if you're seeing kind of weird colors in your coding, check that out. It's probably a quotation problem. All right. Now, now that we have class info header, let's go to our CSS. Create a class info header thing here. And color white and font family hopefully that's a real font family I didn't really check but if not we'll use Corbel and uh, font size 24 pixels All right, let's hit save let's hit refresh hi I'm an info window hi I'm an info window brilliant it's working now again, what's really cool about this is you can essentially format as much as you want in here. You could have this H1, and then we could in, in this we could add a paragraph. Of course, this will be in black again. Um, if you just if you want to embed an image, you can do that, etc. So you can do a ton of stuff here. Um, I often actually like to make my own div inside of this, and wow, you can play around. You guys know HTML, hopefully, so that shouldn't be a problem. What if, however, we actually wanted to include some data from the attribute table here? Well, this is also very easy. You do have to know your data, so let's look at the drone strikes JS. And when we look at this um, GeoJSON, what we see is there's a feature collection, basically meaning a bunch of features. Then we have features, and they're all points because these are drone strikes. And we get coordinates. That's how it knows where to place them. And we have prop properties. And one of the property names is location. And so think of properties as attributes in an attribute table. This would be a column called location. This would be a column called latitude. And then a bunch of other stuff. I don't have casualty information here. So what we can do is um, insert the location name. But it would really stink to have to go in for each one and type in the location name. Luckily, we don't have to do that. Instead, we know that there's an attribute called location. So we can do this. Where am I going? I'm losing my mind. Here we go. Hi, I'm an info window. And then in this paragraph, which will also give a class of, and this is crazy, but I just want you to be able to see it, info header. 
we will say we'll end this quote and hit plus feature properties location plus start a new quote so what this is doing is it's saying hey print this string and it's it's in html print this string print, print this string a new p class with info header then get out of the string and add a property that's in in your geojson in your javascript which is feature properties location and then get out of that and add paragraph and actually before the end of the paragraph i will i could you know add a period or whatever but let's hit save and see what happens here aha uh -huh. so there we go this is how you can populate your info windows with real data it's always feature dot properties and then dot the name of the attribute column which you can find in your GeoJSON by looking here once you get to properties everything under that is going to be an attribute column so hopefully you learned something if you get stuck don't feel free to drop me a line and yeah have fun mapping make your info windows more stylish than this don't forget to use classes and IDs in your in your string text in your pop-ups to really make these things look great have fun <laughs>